greatest hits of all times. It's time now to take a romp through the San Joaquin Valley's rock scene of the 1960s with Dick Lee of the Brimmers. And Lord have mercy, here comes the ice man. You're listening to Amsterdam International Radio and 60s Garage Rock from California. Join me, Dick Lee, and the Iceman for 60 minutes of mind-blowing sounds from California's garage rock scene during a decade of the 1960s. Crank up that volume, baby. Get ready to rock and roll. Only reason Hey, all you garage rock heads, welcome to the show. Don't tell anybody, but it's the weekend, and hey, we made it past Fun Day Monday, and how about Slug Day Tuesday, and Over the Hump Day Wednesday, and then there's Thursday, Do I Really Have to Be Here Day? How about Friday's TGIF, baby? And then finally there's Saturday, that good old garage rock day. Grab that air guitar, tune it up, and crank up that volume. It's time for some of that good old time rock and roll. here to big welcome to all you garage rock heads how you doing today ice man you doing okay 
You just heard another one of my favorite tracks. It was called China Grove. It was released in 1973. The cool thing about this song that it was written and composed by Tommy Johnson, a former member of Visalia's Implicits and Tulare's Charades Band. Wow, what a great track to get me and the Ice Man in the mood. We're going to start off featuring the Implicits and Tommy Johnson. Take a listen to this pre-Doobie Brothers track of Burnin'. Then that'll be followed by a Fresno bass band out of 1968 called R. Bailey and the Soul Folk. Here's their guitar-driven track of Tomorrow Never Comes. But first, Tommy Johnson, by Say California, The Implicits, and Burnin'. <laughs> Show me just where it's at. Now ain't that 
Hi, Dick. I just have to say it at the onset of how proud you've made all of us from the good old San Joaquin Valley for resurrecting these timeless songs, these golden nuggets, as you call them, of rock and roll from our good old San Joaquin Valley in the 1960s. It's a great thing for all of us, and thank you so much. Many thanks to our good old buddy up San Francisco way, Mike Hebert of Dinuba's R.B. Oliver Bridge Band, for your gracious comments. We sure do appreciate it, Mike. Hey, ass man, when you came in the studio this morning, you told me there's a special song you want to play for all those garage rock heads out there. So why don't you go ahead, blow some of the dust off of that vinyl, and cue it up right now. Booker T and his MG Talking about them green onions Them green onions, man They're making me hungry It got me thinking about Jethro Rib and Chicken Palace Features the best breast And thighs you ever let cross your lips Ah, you're gonna love to death, baby Hey, you know what this is? This is the cat with that pretty muscle-bound face It's the cat that you love It's the cat who brought y'all those oldies but goodies those flashes from the past Those good old good ones Love them to death, baby I'm the cat that is so cool That you gotta call me the Iceman Man, oh! <laughs> Iceman, I love that track too Hey, we've been getting a lot of calls in here And you know, believe it or not Some young ladies want to know Where Jethro's Rib and Chicken Palace is at And I think it's in Hanford, if I'm not mistaken <laughs> Yeah, get your map on the slip. You don't want 
heard from a Lamore bass band called The Brimmers and a medley off of their 40-year-old Brotherhood album. Up next, we're going to go to the Nashta music scene. The year was 1965. The group's keyboard player wrote this track. It tells the story of an alluring woman who won't be tied down to one man. The singer wants to tell us all about her, but he can only use these words since she's not there. Well, no one told me about her The way she lied Well, no one told me about her How many people cried But it's too late to say you're sorry How would I know? Why should I care? Please don't bother trying to find her She's not there Well, let me tell you about the way she looked the way she had tanned, the color of her hair Her voice was soft and cool, her eyes were clear and bright But she's not there Well, no one told me about her What could I do? Well, no one told me about her they all knew But it's too late to say you're sorry How would I know? Why should I care? Please don't bother trying to find her She's not there Well, let me tell you about the way she looked The way she had tanned the color of her hair Her voice was soft and cool Her eyes were clear and bright But she's not there Shout out this week goes to Steve Lind, once again out of Anchorage, Alaska. And thank you so much, Steve, for sending me a photo of a poster of a Battle of the Bands in 1965 that was sponsored by Radio KAFY. What a cool poster. And also to Linda Shaline out of Kingsburg for sending me some cool photos of a late 1960s group out of Kingsburg. They were called 12 Miles Out. And then a big shout out to my good friends Dave Gafkin and Bill Ballou. They were in a band in the late 1960s based out of Lemoore called The Sullies, and they were a great rock and roll band. And finally, a good old buddy Captain Mike from San Francisco and his fabulous fundable crew who sings a song while working. Sunday morning ever and Sunday pass on by I'll be working here forever at least until I die Damn if you do, damn if you don't I'm supposed to get a raise next week you know that I'm well Cause I'm working for a living <laughs> Captain Mike, it wasn't me I swear this time it was not me It's the Iceman's fault You know that he's the bad boy from New Orleans <laughs> Up next, we're going to go to Bakersfield and feature a great garage rock band that released only 145 on Era Records. They were called The Chocolate Tunnel, and their track was the highly successful Young Rupert White. It was written by Kenny Johnson and Jerry Ritchie and arranged and produced by Gary Paxton. That'll be followed by another great Bakersfield band out of 1966. They were called The Avengers with Jerry Blake at the helm. The track is called I Told You So. But first, The Chocolate Tunnel, Bakersfield, 1966, the highly successful Young Rupert White. And listen to this track and tell me if it doesn't sound like like something that Lennon and McCartney might compose. The highly successful young Rupert White Who lives in a room at the top of a flight He has many friends that he uses like roads 
Only to get him where he wants to go Now he's gone Far away Maybe he'll stay The highly successful young Rupert White When you need his help, he'll be gone in the night Chasing the stars that you see in his eyes Now he's gone Far away Maybe he'll stay Welcome back, Dick Lee here, and this is my favorite segment of the show. This is where I get a chance to talk with some of these architects of rock and roll music out of the 1960s and 1970s. And on the line today, I have a dear friend and a true architect of rock and roll music throughout the 1960s and 70s and up to the present day. His name is Merle Fankhauser. He's a songwriter, musician, recording artist, audio engineer, author, producer of a monthly TV show called The Tiki Lounge, and in addition to all that, he's released over 50 albums in his career. He is still recording and he has a new project coming out and he's going to be talking about it with us soon. I really wanted all you garage rock heads out there to hear this rich musical history that Merle Finkhauser has. Today Merle talks about moving to Hollywood and the formation of his new band HMS Bounty and the recording of their album. Next he talks about a band called Moo and their formation and the move to Hawaii. Let's continue where we left off from last week. The Fapper Dockley album was a fun album to make, and it was an honor to be with you on it. 
it, Merle. It really was, and all the rest of the guys. You and I have spoken about this many times over the years, and it always amazes us how this album has taken on a life of its own. And that's the other thing, too, Dick. I think I told you this, but the Dutch guy that did all of this research on my discography, he found about five or six of those songs from that album that ended up on other compilation albums. And some of them were foreign, and some of them back east. But they just, I don't know how they do it, they just pick up one of the songs and put it on a compilation album with a bunch of other groups from that period of time. And... You never knew. Two or three years after Fabra Duckley had disbanded, I'll never forget a good friend, the lead guitar player for the Brimmers, uh, Jim Mellick, was visiting my wife and I over in the Pismo Beach area. Jim came up and said, Hey, Dick, I was cleaning out the attic, and I found some of these albums that Fabra Duckley had recorded back in the day. And he said, uh, Here, would you like to have them? And I started laughing. I said, Oh, man. Then I told Jim the story about the album, how it was recorded. And also, uh, at that particular time, I had no idea that they were worth anything, so I just took them and I stored them in the attic for a number of years until I got a hold of you. One of the other bands that I'd like to ask you about, Merle, is HMS Bounty. Uh, who were some of the members of this group and where were they located at and did they do any recordings? You had played with us for a year or so at the Cove and then we started rehearsing with Jack Metz who also was in the Impacts as one of the sax players. He had become a fairly good bass player and he always had a good singing voice. We teamed up with him and and then we decided to move to Hollywood to try to get a record deal. And I had all these songs that I'd written. And, of course, you had a steady job. And you didn't want to move to Hollywood. So we moved to Hollywood. And uh, two producers that I'd met before and publishers took us in the studio to first record some demos. And we recorded those. And they made a meeting with Russ Regan at Uni Record. And he loved of the songs and I sat down in a chair with my Martin acoustic and played him the rest of the songs for an album and he shook my hand and said you got a deal. That is very cool. Now if I may interrupt for a second Merle I'd like to bring up an important point to some younger musicians today that they might not realize back in the 60s for example here you are sitting in an office of a record label exec and you're playing songs and you can't do that anymore. What an experience and how times have changed from the 1960s Why don't you go ahead and tell us the rest of that story. We went in and uh, I think in about three weeks we recorded the whole HMS Bounty album and it had two hits on it that got on the national chart, Things and Girl, I'm Waiting for You. And there again, these producers were sharp guys. They did explain the publishing uh, thing to me, and I learned then how to copyright songs, but I signed the publishing, you know, over to them because I didn't own a publishing company, and I was still trying to learn the ropes. So they ended up getting a lot of my songwriting royalties and publishing royalties for quite a few years and I found out after the fact that they got around 28,000 in front for recording us and we never... <laughs> We never got any of that money, but we did end up getting a new PA system. And, you know, Jack, Matts, and Bill Dodd, and Larry, the drummer, they all got disillusioned after we were down there for about a year that we didn't get our big pot of gold. And here we were hearing our songs on the radio, and we were playing with groups like Chicago that was then called CTA, and we opened up for Canned Heat and a bunch of other groups, and we thought, well, gee, we're not making the kind of money we should be making. And so they left and moved back up the coast to the central coast. And I stayed in, in L.A. and kept playing. And then Jeff Cotton, who was playing with me in the Exiles, was at that time playing with Captain Beefheart's Magic Band. I remember him, yes. And I was living outside of L.A. in Woodland Hills and come to find out one canyon over was where Beefheart was. So we bumped into each other at the local supermarket and Don Valit said, Hey, Merle, come on over and jam with us. So I'd go over there for jam sessions and it was a very weird and strange situation. And those guys, most of them slept all day and then they'd stay up all night playing this weird music that Beefheart would write. And then Jeff 
expressed interest to me at that time that he wanted to get out of the group. It was just too avant-garde, and uh, he wanted to do something that would have more commercial appeal. So after a few years, he quit Beefheart and joined me, and we formed the group Moo. That's a great segue to the next question I was going to ask him, Will, because it is about the band Moo. And for all you garage rock heads out there, that is spelled M-U. If you get a chance, go online and listen to some of these tracks by Moo. They are some great, great songs. Did the band move over to Hawaii, specifically a Maui, and then record over there? Jeff and I got together, and one of the singers and bass players was in the exile. Larry Willie, very talented guy, and Randy Weimer, who was one of the last Exiles drummers who played on Tomorrow's Girl. They came down from the desert and joined us, and we all lived in my house in Woodland Hills. And we didn't even have a name for the band, but we had these gigs because there was this agent that had been booking the HMS Bounty, and he kept booking my new group. And we didn't know what to call the band, and he would call us Merle and the Boys or something, and he said, well, you guys need a name. So I was cleaning up in the log bin around this fireplace in this house I was renting, and I found this 1932 edition of this book called The Lost Continent of Moo. And I got really interested in that, and they were talking about how the North and South American Indians all came from this now submerged continent in the Pacific Ocean that was now the Hawaiian Islands. It had sunk down, and the mountain peaks of Mu were actually the Hawaiian Islands. And Jeff Cotton and I, in particular, got really interested in this theory. And we started studying everything about it that we could. And we decided to call the band Mu. And I tell this story in my book, Calling from a Star, the Merle Fankhauser story that's out and available at Amazon and everywhere. Now I tell it in detail. And so we called the band Mu. A producer heard us, took us in the studio. We recorded the first Moo album at Wally Hyder's studio where Crosby, Stills, and Nash had recorded. And Era RTV Records put it out in 1971, and it immediately started getting FM radio play. If you remember, that's when all the FM stations would play oh, yes, I do. entire album cuts, you know. Uh-huh. And you could play longer songs. You didn't have to stick to that two-and-a-half-minute format that they wanted for the singles. So the album started getting played all over the place in the East Coast in places like Indiana and Ohio and New York and all over in California. And then we got so into this Moo Theory, and we had recorded some more songs that came out on singles in Wally Hyder's studio. And we decided a friend of ours had moved to Mount and he told us that there were still remnants of ruins of the lost continent of Mu and the people that had built them there thousands of years ago on the island and that really sparked our interest. So we all went over for a vacation and we just felt like we were home and I'll never forget it, Dick. It was February 28th of 1973. We told our roadies goodbye. We sold our equipment truck. I sold my car and we took our amplifier fires and guitars in our clothes and got on the plane and flew to Maui. Wow, that was quite a move. Now, during our prior conversations, Moral, and correct me if I'm wrong, you stayed over there in Maui for quite a few years, didn't you? Yeah, I lived on Maui for 15 years, although I traveled back and forth to California to play a lot, but we ended up meeting the engineer from Quicksilver Messenger Service, who had also moved over there, Barry Mayo. He had some leftover recordings equipment from one of Quicksilver's sessions, Just For Love, that album. He heard us playing and thought we were fantastic. He was just amazed. And so he set up this equipment in our house and we recorded a second album that much later, around 1982, came out as End of an Era, the last album by Moo. You just heard part four of a continuing interview with Merle Finkhauser and now a song from Merle's group called Moo. The track is called one more day and it was released in 1972. So 
is gone too soon Your life is gone too soon The chain that ties us together Is stronger than we know People look around you Before your time to go Man, we've gotten a number of calls and emails that ask for a birthday song, either their wife or their husband or boyfriend or girlfriend. So why don't we start doing this once a month and we're going to have a birthday song, especially for all you garage rock heads out there. This track here was originally released in 1959 by a group called The Crest, and then in 1973 it was featured in a very cool movie called American Graffiti. This is a special dedication to Anita from Frank out of Selma, and also to Cameron from Richard out of Fresno, and then to Kathy from Robert out of Bakersfield. So right now I want all you dudes out there, I want you to stand up. Now come on, stand up, walk over, and grab that woman of yours. Embrace her, get out there in that kitchen floor, the living room floor, and slow dance to this song. See if you can remember this one. And right here, we're going to take you back to 1959, The Cress. And happy birthday, all you darlings out there. You don't know what you did. Right. 
Come on now. Come on, you have to break it up. Those kids of yours might be walking in the door at any moment now, unannounced. Hey, you just heard Joe Cocker at his massive hit, You Are So Beautiful. The year was 1974. Up next, we're going to be traveling back to Fresno. This band played all over the city at places such as the Crimson Castle, the Rainbow Ballroom, the Marigold Ballroom, and the Falls at Bass Lake. Here they are performing a cover of Church Key. They were called Jim Waller and the Deltas, with Jim Waller at the helm. And then that'll be followed by a Visalia-based surf band. They were called the Fabulous Beach Band. And here's their cover of Pipeline with Mike Wagner at the helm. But first, Fresno, 1965, Jim Waller and the Deltas and Church Key.
Walmart Nelly. If you can please do us a favor and give us a long and strong house. Oh. Oh. Who said I see walking in these woods? Why, it's Little Red Riding Hood. Hey there, Little Red Riding Hood. You sure are looking good. You're everything a big bad wolf could want. Oh, listen to me, Little Red Riding Hood. I don't think little big girls should go walking in these spooky old woods alone. Sheet suit on Till I'm sure that you've been shown That I can be trusted Walking with you alone Well, it's that time and I gotta get out of here. I'm Dick Lee. Join me in the Iceman next week for some of those cool, mind-blowing garage rock sounds from California's Central Valley. If you have a request, don't hesitate to contact me through this station or through the Brimmers website at www.thebrimmers.com. If there's a song you want to hear from a particular band, let me know and I will track it down, especially for you. Iceman, we have some cool things lined up for next week's show. Do you think these garage rock heads are gonna dig it? You're gonna love it, you man. Before we go, remember these wise words from the Iceman. I guarantee that they will enhance and help that relationship with your significant other. When you're wrong, admit it quickly. And when you're right, keep your big mouth shut. Keep your big mouth shut. <laughs> That's right, baby. Keep that big mouth shut. You be kind to one another out there and never get rid of that desire to climb a tree or run through the sprinklers. And remember this new word by the Iceman. Listen closely now. Are you ready? It's wonderful. Yes, that putting the fun and the wonderfulness together. You want to hear it again? Wonderful. Ah!
if you got time, do the jerk. Remember, baby, don't be L7. And I'll catch you on the flip side. Till next time, this is the Ice Man saying, Oh!